Welcome to episode one of the Local Big Time Podcast. Thank you guys all for your support and getting us to this point. Uh, couldn't do it without you. I uh, want to give a big thank you to our sponsors. Cardinal Point Screen Print and Embroidery has hundreds of products for your business, sports team, or function. Upload your logo or start your design today at cardinalpointscreenprint.com. Jacob, that's my guy. He's helped us out with all of our needs, merch-wise. I mean, love the sweatshirt, rock it all the time. Um, yeah, he's the best, especially if you have a men's league team. I know in New England, it's huge to have custom jerseys for like pond hockey or just, just your uh, rec league. So he can do it all. So definitely hit him up. Uh, there's a link for his service on our website. If you scroll down to the bottom. Also, Gage Pelletier, a member of HYHA family, has been battling cancer. He's been going through chemotherapy and is recovering from amputation surgery. There's an amazing fundraiser happening right now at cardinalpointscreenprint.com. You can buy Team Gage hats and sweatshirts in support. So, um, Gage, big fans of you. So, hopefully, you're doing good. Um, yeah, Team Gage sweatshirts are awesome. It's got like the hockey strings in it, kind of ties it back to that hockey sense. But uh, we're pulling for you, and if there's anything you need, let us know. Also, finally, want to give out a shout out to our last sponsor, Burger Bar. 231 Colchester Parkway, Colchester, Vermont. Use promo code BIGTIMEBURGA with an A uh, for 10% off your next online purchase. Excludes alcohol. Uh, Frontier Burger. I know it's not a burger, but it's a chicken sandwich. Mwah. The breading on that, phenomenal. It's made the same way that Chick-fil-A does it, and it's healthier. So, health nut. But, uh, yeah. And uh, they have great milkshakes too, so definitely check them out. 231 College Parkway, Colchester, Vermont. Local Big Time Podcast, Nick Lavalley, Sam Matson. How you doing? Uh, before we start, want to give a big thank you to Alex Maglione for coming on to our first ever episode. Um, that was awesome. That was a great interview. Um, your story is something that, that I hope it really inspires others to, to keep pursuing their dream. I know, I know one of the, the kind of the takeaways I, I was amazed by was the fact that you're willing to put 10 years of effort in before you even get a credit. So, um, right. keeps, uh, yeah, it's, just, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Just, you know, it's these stories that we're going to continue to bring on here. We're going to continue to bring these people who have these stories of not giving up, who were kind of at that point in their life where they actually did feel like they had to give up and they found some way to dig deep or, you know, found some way to keep it going. And, you know, that's kind of one of the big messages we want to get out here is to kind of find that drive to do what you want to do with your life. You know what I mean? And these people are doing it, which is great. Yeah. And, and it's super inspiring because we're also in the thick of it, trying to like get to where they are. So exactly. Uh, it's like, it's like hats off medicine. to them. Yeah. So, uh, but episode one what was your thoughts you have any uh little takeaways after a little recap yeah, i um i thought it went pretty good you know i'm glad we finally got it out there i feel like we've been talking about it for a little bit and i think it's something that's definitely going to get the message out you know like for local big time we can also use it as like a hub you know a sort of way to kind of update people you know what's going on what sort of projects we're working on and stuff like that so i think it's great you know, I think people loved Alex. He did a great job, obviously. He's a great kid. So I'm excited for the future. And we've got great guests coming on the show with great stories. So I'm excited to see what the people think. Yeah, absolutely. I just feel like the more we keep telling these stories, the more they're going to fall in love with what we're doing and, and what, what a lot of our friends are doing in the in the business and, and how they've uh, kind of never deteriorated from that, that road to success. It's It's definitely a long road and it's it's not easy at all. I mean, that's why yeah. it's, it's, there's only so many people at the top. It's, it, it really isn't easy, but uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we got some big projects coming out um, this month. We got uh, on the auto draft show, we have our uh, NFL draft video where uh, we want to put our skills to the test to see how well we could draft against a professional NFL GM. And uh, I think you guys are going to be pretty surprised. So kind of how we set it up was big Patriots fans, obviously, Nick and I, ride or die. That's our guy, Big Bill. Love Shout Bill. out Pats big Nation. Guy. Yeah, exactly. So like we, that's, we love fantasy. We love football. Nick's football, actually a college football player. So 
Um, it's uh, it, it's part of our blood. I mean, washed up now, you know. But yeah, you know, once I was mean, a college football player. I, I wish I was. I was on the roster. We'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I I wish I was good enough to even sniff a college lineup. I mean. I love football so much. I, I play in a flag football league. So it's it's like it's crazy. I don't want to go off topic, but these division three players deserve so much credit for the work that they go through. Like oh. did, these players, these schedules they have, they're working full time schedules. They're going to class. They're going to weight lifts in between class. You know, they're they're doing whatever they can to get a meal in before practice. That shit's not easy. You know, it's no. it may be division three, but you know, it, it's tough. It's not easy. So my hat's off to him. Yeah, especially at a big D1 program, you have so many more amenities and so many more outlets to support you, right? Like you are going to have every meal prepped for you so you don't have to shoot home and fucking boil your broccoli and get yeah. your chicken ready. Like they have everything available for them. So like when you start to get like to the D2 and D3 levels, these amenities aren't there. You have like the bare minimums, right? You have the, and, yeah, and they deserve it, you know, these D1 athletes. Don't get me wrong, but oh, you know, credit's due with these D3 athletes because, you know, they are grinding and, you know, they, they want to get an education and play the sport they love at the same time, so you got to respect it. Oh, yeah, and it's it's uh, it, the biggest uphill battle because they don't make it easy on D3 athletes. They don't really give you – I mean, granted, the schools don't have as much money as a big D1 program, so, like – their amenities, their outlets, you're, you're just dealing with the bare minimum. So it's, it's amazing to kind of see a lot of these guys succumb that and, and go off and do great things. I mean, there's guys that played professional football uh, at the D3 level. I know Norwich has a wide receiver for this year that's on the, uh, that's on the, uh, the kind of the target for the draft board. I'm um, kind of late, like fifth, sixth round type of guy, but it's pretty amazing, especially with a COVID year and canceling yep. your season to still be – kind of on that radar is exactly wild. and these are the stories that we're trying to shine light on i mean situation like that that shit doesn't happen often so when you see something like that that does happen it it gives people hope and it, it gives people a drive to get yeah. shit done so i think i think people are going to really like it it's pretty interesting to kind of see how good a couple of average joes are with only watching youtube videos for scout tape compete against an nfl gm with the resources the scouts, they've watched these players all year, right? We watched maybe a month worth of YouTube videos and we're just sitting on Google, right? So it's, uh, I think people are going to be pretty interested to see how well we did. I mean, I don't want to give too many secrets out, but uh, we drafted a couple pro bowlers this year. Not a big deal. So not bad. <laughs> if uh, Bill Belichick's looking for just a wide receivers coach, a couple one, two punches right here. We'll split the duties. Easy. Oh, seriously. I mean, no promises on, you know, me picking a random ass guy like Bill usually seems to do, but hey, it works out for him every yeah. fucking year. So I, I can't doubt the man. I can't, I can't doubt guy, what he does. The guy hires subway employees and turns them into pro bowlers. So Legit, I, I was... it makes no sense. And every year you're watching the draft and you kind of like shaking your head. What the fuck you doing, Bill? But oh. then that guy just ends up being a beast. You just can't fucking question it. It's like the NFL draft for a Patriots fan. And this is like, I know it's going to sound biased, but it's not fun because all the guys that we draft don't really play for the team really ever. We just f sign all these like undrafted guys that like turn out to never be never a star either. I yeah. agree. We never get the star on draft day. No. And yeah. even when we do get a first round pick, he's a bust. So it's like, it's we're going to trade it down because Bill doesn't <laughs> yeah. want the first round pick. <laughs> trade it down to get 17 fifth round picks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, seriously. That's what we do. We don't even, it's just like, it's, I love watching the draft and I think it's like, I love the first round. I think they do an amazing job with like the spectacle and everything. But as a Patriots fan, you know, you're just wasting like four hours of your life to get to the 26 pick and only for them to trade it last second. <laughs> you're yeah, just like, it's nuts. But you, fuck! <laughs> think about it in this sense, though. He's like drafting big timers. He's drafting these people who no one knows about. Or there are these people that were supposed to be like a top 10 pick and they tore their ACL or they hurt their shoulder or something stupid like that. So their draft stock just oh, yeah. dropped about, down completely and Bill sitting there like, ooh. Yeah, <laughs> last year, our first pick for the draft was a D2 uh, safety. It's yeah. like Who dude. actually ended up lighting it up, if we're going to be honest. He's, He's so better. sick. He's so, so sick. But like, who the, f where the fuck was this guy? Like, there's 
with, like you look up a YouTube video, it's like it's uh, like recorded off like a flip phone. So like I don't know how he sees tape on like, these guys. Like a huddle tape, like four sixty. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep hitting the old uh, fifteen second recycle. <laughs> you remember the huddle tape? How they had like those pre tracks you could kind of throw on them, and there was that one good track that everybody used for their huddle tape. Oh yeah. It was like the standard track for it. It, it was literally so like. The camera angle is like the furthest angle from the field. So you have to like put an arrow above where your player is. Yeah, or the, or the circle. You got to pause the video and put a circle. Hey, that's me, guys. Yeah, that's me. Now <laughs> watch this this little splot really closely while I run around the field. It's incredible. That's, uh, D, that's D3 technology for you. Like everyone else has like game tape from like recorded by ESPN because you're televised. We have like a kid who's just trying to get campus money. Uh, with a tripod Four while minutes. he's texting like this, <laughs> like watching <laughs> the game. <laughs> Trying to get campus money or uh, what are they called? Like the little credits you get on your school cards. You get yeah. like, copies and shit. <laughs> Just so like after like a Saturday bender, he can go to the cafe and get like Dunkin' Donuts and not have to eat the food. <laughs> yeah, we had we had like owl cards at Keenan. I forget what it was, but we'd get like owl points or something like that every month. And we'd, we'd use it in Lloyd's and it was the only place where you could actually go and get like good campus food you know what i mean because there's oh. always the, the dc like the dining commons oh then yeah there's that one place on a campus where you can actually buy shit it's people the best. love it and it's always oh. packed too especially always like packed. at d3 schools like you have like an eighth right like so like you go to like a big time like d1 program they have like 10 of those spots right all around yeah. campus so you true. have like one at your small town d3 school that's like the if you don't hit it at the right time it's like you fuck it you're like you're gonna wait there so for an true. hour like if you go right after class, you're fucked because oh, everyone goes after that class. Like the before worst. the other one. Yeah. <laughs> you you get fucked. I can't tell you oh. how many times I've been late to my class grabbing a fucking fruit cup or something. It's the worst. <laughs> it's so rattling too because you're just sitting there watching the clock just tick away. Yeah, but at least the professors get it because it's like, yeah. do you want me to sit here hungry or like – can I be yeah. five minutes late with a fruit cup? <laughs> exactly. It's like, what, what were you really going to get done in the first five minutes of class? You're going to say your name, you're going to tell me the date, and then you're going to tell me how I forgot my homework. So, like, yeah. realistically, we're not really <laughs> missing that much. <laughs> it gets to a point, too. Do I want to sit there with a hungry stomach and really not pay attention, or do I want to get some energy? I mean, it's my own fault for not doing it when I woke up, but it was yeah. perfect. No one's yeah, perfect. Who's, who's going to wake up early in college and be like, yep, got to get that fruit cup before uh, everyone else does and then go to class like there's yeah. no one like that and no wrote, you wake up you five seconds alarm, before, yeah exactly <laughs> and you get that extra five minutes of sleep it, oh. it helps i don't know why but that extra five minutes feels great oh god it's it's a lifesaver but yeah so i think you guys are uh, gonna fall in love with that video coming out towards the end of the month but uh tomorrow we got our thirsty thursday playlist i know uh one of my favorite things is watching the videos that Nick puts out for it because they're just fucking hilarious. I mean, the crazy part about it is you'll you'll have clips from movies that I've seen that I'm like, what movie is this from? And you'll be like, oh, it's uh, it's uh, Baywatch or um, like the internship. Like, where was yeah. that hidden Did gem? I, I love putting the movie scenes before Thirsty Thursday because at first, you know, we were kind of just throwing it out there and yeah. it looked great and everything, but it was definitely missing something and now you know we throw those videos on every week i think it makes it hilarious and you know for me when i'm editing it i watch it you know about 50 times so it's yeah. fucking hilarious the first time and i think it's hysterical some of the scenes because they're so true the baywatch one you bring up the kids singing in the shower and it's girl oh. vocals like how fucking true is that every guy sings in the shower if you so say you don't sing in the shower you're such a fucking liar yeah that and like the uh like everyone's been like so accurate it's always been like uh you've done it at least some point in your life like you had that one like the kevin hart dancing when he's like doing this and the girl oh comes yeah in. And oh. the fact that it, like he he gets all embarrassed too in front of a girl and he's like Jesus, <laughs> that is so standard. For oh, yeah, for have you ever been? Uh, this kind of just done. I mean, you ever get caught singing in the car and you make eye contact with like a guy across from you in the lane and they see you and they see you singing and then you see yep. them and you're like Fuck. <laughs> you just pretend like you didn't see him or the music kind of cuts off with people in the car and you're like uh like yeah. you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> Or you say the wrong lyric and it sounds you just sound like oh the that's the most idiot. awkward part. Or if you know you're at a party and you're you're kind of buzzed and you're looking at someone, you're saying the lyrics and you say the wrong one, it's like fuck, <sighs> I look like an idiot. Yeah, all your coolness just gets 
out the window. Just faded. If you had any wheels going for you, done so. Exactly. (laughs) It's it's uh it's a quiet walk back, that's for sure. (laughs) Uh, 100. But uh no dorm centers super exciting because we've been um kind of been planning that for a little bit, but COVID obviously kind of put that on hold. So you know for the future we hope to continue to build dorm center and kind of bring that out of the works for you guys. But just know keep it in the back of your heads. We are working on that and we are super, super excited to get that out to you guys. Yeah, exactly. We, we, uh, we wanted to put it out at a time where, uh, it would make sense. So, uh, we can start to, uh, display it and then be able to film, uh, the next season while it's happening. But, uh, well, when you're thinking about music, what, what goes into your, uh, what's kind of the things that check the box off for what's a heater? Yeah. So, I'm not going to lie, at first it was pretty easy, but now that we're at, you know, 31, 32, it's, it gets kind of tough, especially not to repeat the same songs. That's so I think, you know, lies. yeah, like for me, it's, it's kind of like you want to pick those songs that everybody knows, right? So to me, like, what's a heater? Okay, well, when I'm out at a party, a heater is a song that you could throw on and everybody knows the words to that song. Now, that's not necessarily every single song on the playlist because we try to, you know, we try to we try to vary it so we have newer yeah. songs we have throwbacks we got country we've got edm you know we try to get everybody's taste of music in there so yeah it's all songs that we like but you know at the same time we're also trying to find songs that you guys like and we're trying to hit every type of genre so i just love the fact that it just uh, as soon as you hear it it just makes you want to like drop everything and just be like yeah i just want to drink right now <laughs> right it's a nostalgia feeling like music does that to you you hear these songs and it makes you think about a certain time you know oh yeah and and that's the best part about the thirsty thursday playlist is like you don't have to think just put it on the ox cord press play walk away and enjoy because it's... it's it's crazy there's 31 playlists right now there's a bunch of songs on there so seriously if you're looking for something to play there is no sense in you not taking a step over to dorm center five. I mean, there is a shitload of songs for you to choose from. You're bound oh. to like at least a couple of them. So I love going back to old ones and just listening oh. to like some heaters from back. It's great. Like now, the Akon uh, and the T-Pains and the, even the old Chris Brown, old Drake, best. all that shit's unreal. It's the best. And uh, definitely be sure to subscribe and follow. Uh, if you're Spotify, follow if you're uh, Apple Music, definitely hit the follow button. That way, when it does come out, you don't miss it. It's going to pop right into your phone. And, uh, yeah, just keep sharing it. The more shares, share the love. Hopefully a lot of people fall in love with these playlists because that's why we like to do it. We like to do it for our own selfish reasons because, I mean, it's nice when I don't have to look for music anymore. I just throw on the playlist, and then I, I love how we get to share it with the rest of the people and to enjoy it as well. Big facts. But, you know, it is funny to see people's reactions to it. Oh, so many Those DMs and from the, the cool people, people love the videos. Yeah, it really brings these movies out of the works too. Like you said, that internship scene is fucking hilarious, and it's the beginning of the movie too. That is a fucking intro. Yeah, that, you know what I'm saying. I can't believe I missed that in the beginning because that is like the greatest scene ever, and it's like so true. And like everyone's yeah. sung that song at least once in their life. <laughs> he just stares her down too when he does the bird thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he he gives her the biggest look. Made the fly. <laughs> like, <he's not laughs> fucking play around. God, I, I love Vince Vaughn. He's the best. So funny, man. But, Certain actors, when they just when they get in their rants, we talk about Jim Carrey all the time. This, they're so fucking talented. Their improv, this shit's incredible. So talented. It's it's amazing how they can just ad lib. Like I I've I've tried to go off the cusp, and I just like fumble my words. I sound stupid. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, it's it's crazy that they can get complete thoughts out without stumbling their words. I mean, it happens to us all the time on oh. here, so. And they're, like, creating it in their head as they're talking, which is, like, the craziest part. Is like, I yeah, to think about sentences. it, form the sentence, and then say it. It's crazy. It's, it's extremely talented. Wild. But we got a great episode for uh, episode two for the local Big Time Podcast. Mike Hardman stops by. Uh, just signed with the Blackhawks. And uh, suiting enough, today is his first day back on the ice with the team. So um, he had to go quarantine for 14 days due to NHL protocol. But his story is pretty amazing. It's uh, His path to get to the NHL was uh, more of a unique path. It's it's not kind of your typical 
uh, get get all the get all the looks at 18 years old. I mean, he uh, he was supposed to go to Union. He decommitted and committed to BC, and and a lot of people doubted. And a lot of people said he'd be like a fourth line guy. He was kind of just like a hometown discount. Um, but he just keeps proving people wrong, and 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 even like his story. A lot of a lot of guys that go to BC typically are like 18 years old and are drafted. He he came in as a 20 year old, not drafted. So the fact that he just worked his ass off and and uh, just kept kept looking at the the bigger picture, it, it's pretty odd. It's pretty surreal. Yeah, imagine from his standpoint how <clears throat> good it must feel to look at everyone who, like you said, didn't really think he was going to make it or kind of thought he was a fourth line grinder, and he's like, "Fuck you, <sighs> fuck you." also fuck you like that must be such a great feeling for him that he accomplished that and he just looks at everyone who doubted him that probably fueled him from the beginning so that's oh, fucking awesome yeah. and imagine like again he's a Bo- he's a boston guy so like we're obviously local big times the heart and soul is massachusetts right yeah so it's it's just nice to to it must just be amazing to be able to play for your hometown team growing up and and to like go off and do great things is it's it's awesome and and uh it's, it's he's one of us you know he's he's part of the local big time uh family so exactly uh, and he's got a great story too that hopefully inspires people to step out of the norm and not do like we talk about this all the time do what makes you happy you know do something if it's if it's something creative great you know if it's something different than what other people do that's great too but definitely step out there and put yourself out there and try to make things happen absolutely with me is a man standing 6'2", sophomore, forward, hailing from Hanover, Mass. Plays for the Boston College Eagles. Ever heard of them? Newly signed, Blackhawks forward, Mike Hartman. How are you? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited uh, to be on. Oh, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I definitely, uh, one of the big things that I, when we were thinking about this podcast and, and, um, kind of the, the theme of it is we, we want to be about people that come from small towns, communities that are doing amazing things in, in the world. And, um, yeah, you were definitely on our list and, and now with kind of the recent news and with your signing with the Blackhawks, it just, your, your story just keeps getting better. I mean, this is just another chapter of your life. So it's, uh. Thank you so much for, for taking the time out of your busy day. I can only imagine what it must have been like for you, just kind of uplifting your whole life and, and moving to a new city in, in, like, no time at all. Yeah, it was definitely exciting. Um, I actually signed um, last Tuesday, and then I've been in quarantine. This is my last day in quarantine here. Um, and then I my first practice is tomorrow. So, yeah, really excited. And uh, But, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Just uh, never been to Chicago before. And I've uh, been here for a week now, and uh, the city is unbelievable. And uh, I've heard like nothing but great things from uh, people that have been here. So yeah, really excited. That's awesome. Now, where are you staying right now? In a hotel? Looks like yeah, I'm living like- in a hotel um, right in the city. It's like a lot of the a lot of the rookies are staying here. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice hotel. I'm like in a uh, with like like I said before, like most of the guys are here. So it's um, you know it's really nice and like right in the city where. Uh, like five minutes from the practice and the uh, game rink, so oh. well, I can't not too bad at all. Yeah, that's sick. Will you walk or will you drive for your commute? No, yeah, I'll drive. I've I have a car here. So. Did oh, you? Yeah. Um, so I mean, your story is pretty crazy. I mean, sophomore at Boston College, you just signed with the Blackhawks. So to like uplift your whole life in a matter of what two weeks to move to another city is pretty pretty crazy. Like, how was that whole process? How did that whole process kind of work out? Yeah, it was, um, it was, it was definitely the hardest decision of my life to leave BC. Um, as a kid growing up in mass, um, uh, you know, I, I, I dreamt of playing at a bean pot school my whole life. And, uh, every, every year I go to the bean pot, the hockey games as a kid and, um, you know, being able to play in the bean pot last year as a freshman, it was just a, a dream come true. And, um, you know, this year, uh, it was emotional losing that last team to St. Cloud state and, um, so we obviously wanted to win the whole thing. I thought we had the, we had the team to maybe you know win it all. And losing that last game was really tough. But um, you know, I was just talking to my family um, after that game, and just thought it was the right move to you know sign with Chicago. And um, it was just a really just a dream come true. Ever since I was five, you know, my dream was to you know play in the NHL, and um, it's just a, a great organization, and just uh, really excited for it. 
oh, I mean, Chicago Blackhawks, what <laughs> the dynasty. It's like the Patriots for hockey. Like, I mean, the the amount of Stanley Cups they've been to. I mean, they used to produce teams for literally every. They used to produce players for literally every other team. I mean, they were kind of the feeder program for the longest time. And uh, it's just got to be so surreal to kind of grow up. I mean, when you're growing up during that time, they they kind of just turned everything around uh, kind of overnight. And yeah. uh, you had like uh, the Patrick Kane, the Jonathan Taves kind of be like the pioneers for that mm-hmm. dynasty. And now you look at them and their household name. Yeah, and- I remember I remember uh, in 2013 when they beat the Bruins in the cup. And that, that game six game was like the craziest like, like two minutes ever when they – Bruins were up by were up by a goal, and then the Blackhawks scored like two quick ones in like 20 seconds. In they uh, end up winning the cup at the Garden. There, um, that was like the one game I remember. You probably rip, remember too. Oh, rip my soul! I was at the bar. Oh, God, yeah, I, I I remember. Um, I remember like we just came back to like tie it up, and I was like, okay, this yeah. is like game six. Uh-huh. And, like this is if we get this, we go back home. We'll be fine. We can win this, and then. Uh, I forget who it was who had the like tip in front that just like put it away. I was like, oh my god, this. Uh, that was that was tough. So I was uh, we were all Bruins fans growing up, um, obviously, and uh, but yeah, that was the one game I remember that was just like, oh my god, like just crazy. They just like seemed to uh, you know always win cops and uh, no, it's just such a storied franchise, original six teams. So um, it's just pretty surreal. Now, did you have any choice um, when you're making your decision for uh, pro teams? Did you have any other suitors, or how does that kind of yeah, process work yeah. out? So, I, um, so after my freshman year, I was supposed to go to the Florida Panthers development camp, and um, that camp ended up getting canceled because of COVID. So there was, uh, you know, other teams that were interested, but um, just talking to my family and and stuff like that, I think that Chicago is just a, a perfect fit. I think there's, uh, you know, they're really young right now, and um, you know, there's tons of guys just be able to, you know, be able to play with like guys like, um, just Kane and all those guys in practice and stuff like that. It's just like pretty crazy. But yeah, I think just, um, just talking with my family, I thought it was just, uh, the right fit. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, just kind of came down to that. That's awesome. I mean, your story for a lot of people that don't know that are listening is, is pretty amazing. I mean, you started out in U18, then you end up at Winchiden, which is at the time not necessarily rec- uh, recognized as being like a powerhouse for hockey, even though you've had like talented players come through that system. I mean, there's, yeah. I mean, they, you had kids that left the USHL that came back to that prep school. So, like, that's kind of like the caliber of the program. But, like, you kind of look at Winchiden and compared to like Cushing or like an Exeter or like those schools, they kind of get more of a, a notoriety in a sense. Yeah. Where, I think um, uh, choosing Winch was one of the best decisions of my life because I was a sophomore at Severian Brothers High School. It's like a Catholic school in mass. And uh, I was like five, seven, 150 pounds. Like uh, I haven't really hit my growth spurt yet. And then um, Winch, uh, I had a few buddies that went there. Uh, ben Thomas was a kid that went there the year before, like me, Boyser, uh, Matt Fawcett, Johnny Malera, all these kids uh, end up going there the, my first year. And um, he kind of just told us to all come. He said it was a, a great time there and uh, really good hockey. And we all kind of just took his word. And um, the biggest thing for me was like, I wanted to go to a school where I was going to play. Uh, yeah. you know, I know this power, there's a uh, powerhouse prep schools, like, you know, KUA, Cushing, they had like studs there. So I don't think I would have played there right away. So the thing for me was just like getting confidence and playing like top six and playing with good players. And um, I was able to get that. And I think my second year there, I really hit my growth spurt. I think I went from like being like five ten to like six one that summer and put on like fifteen pounds. And Jesus, um, you no know, that that year I kind of just had like a a breakout year and um, it was pretty crazy. But yeah, I think I mean honestly, like out of all the decisions I made in my hockey career, I think going to Winch was probably the most important one. Really, I mean, yeah. and it doesn't even stop there because then right after Winchton, you graduate and then you enter the junior hockey circuit. And uh, you had some time in the BCHL and the USHL, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, my first year in the USHL, we were, I was in Des Moines, and um, we were like the second to last team in the league. We were, we were like pretty bad. And uh, uh, so the guy, Dave Allison, my coach, like one of the, he was an awesome coach, really good to me. He, uh, 
ended up getting fired. He was a GM and the head coach. And um, so I was kind of like, just like kind of freaking out a little bit, like new coach coming in my second year. So I ended up uh, talking to Union, the team I was committed to, and um, kind of just said I want to, you know, switch spots. And a lot of my buddies were in the BCHL, and they loved it. Like, it's just like an awesome time, like great hockey, whatever, like great place to live. So I kind of started talking to teams in the BCHL and ended up going out to West Kelowna. And uh, it was honestly like one of the best years of my life, just like living. Uh, I show up to my billet house, like unbelievable house. Um, my my billets had a at a uh, boat a jet ski oh, that's ripping, a ripping, sick ripping, setup yeah ripping around first week all the boys um on my team are like all, all like beauties like just great guys still talk to all those guys today and uh i just went out there and um i knew a few guys that played there um that were that were living in boston the year before and they just said it was like, just it was an awesome time i ended up going out there and just loved it and uh end up committing to bc that year and just it's great Crazy, yeah. Now, when you made the the commitment to BC, you were prior to that you were committed to Union, right? Yeah, I was committed to Union. Yeah. Hold on one sec. Let's get. It. I'm gonna tell Steve to take his cat back. I fucking hate babysitting that stupid asshole. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so uh, prior to committing to, to BC, you're, you were committed to uh, Union, correct? Yeah, I was committed to Union. I, uh, so I was committed there since my senior year at Winch. And then um, going into uh, my, in the BCHL there, it's just uh, I was having a, you know, a pretty good year. And um, I think when BC, uh, I ended up decommitting from Union like midway through the year. And I remember just kind of get, getting a call from um, some schools, whatever, uh, around uh new england and i remember just getting a call from a boston number and uh picked up the phone it was jerry york and i was just like my hand was just shaking uh it's just a guy that you know you see on tv you know your whole life and hall like, of famer I, hall of famer you're just like i remember him just talking to me and just me just just really shaking the whole time and um i ended up going on a visit to bc uh for a couple of days and uh, and I had a few buddies that were on BC at the time and ended up staying with them and it was just, uh, just an awesome, awesome weekend. And, uh, I ended up committing, I ended up, so I stayed there, uh, for two nights and then I ended up getting back to West Kelowna. I remember calling my, my dad. I was like, Hey, like, I know you told me that you want me to take a week and just, but like, I'm, I'm committing to BC. So I ended up calling, um, calling coach York, um, literally like the next day. And said, "Hey, like I'm, I'm committing to BC, and it was that was a great decision for me. My, my freshman and sophomore year were just awesome years. I uh, met, you know, guys that you know will be my friends for the rest of my life, and just an awesome school. Um, you know, not not just hockey, just like such a sick campus. Yeah, sick campus, and just like having a football team there. So uh, going to the football games, you know, there's and a good there's, football team too. It's not some." Oh, yeah dump like they send guys to the nfl which is sick yeah so like all like in like all the tailgates and it was just like so much fun i think even this this year with covid like it was still just like it's still a blast and um you know, how are the my, uh what, what are the mods looking like uh, in <laughs> the, mod, the mods the mods were, were fun this year with with covid day we i didn't know anyone that lived yeah lived in there this year so uh didn't didn't go there but uh but yeah no there was a girls hockey mod my freshman year so that was that was a little bit of fun but <laughs> that, place, that yeah. place is ground zero for everything i mean yeah that, good time good time preaching to the choir like that the tailgate how it's like set up is the uh, sickest setup i've ever seen like because you have the mods right there you got the parking lot and like it's oh, honestly, shoulder shoulder packed it's uh no i mean i'm obviously biased but i think uh i mean you look at all these other schools but like bc was just an absolute time and uh just talking to guys. I know a couple of kids are choosing, they're like 16, 17, looking for, to uh, go to college like, in the next couple of years. And uh, they're trying to connect to a school. And I just say all good things about BC. It just, uh, just an unreal time. And uh, hockey wise too, like you get treated so well, you know, you're going to uh, going to these awesome hotels night before games, you're going to Capitol Grill, eating these just like unbelievable, like 
steakhouses like the night it seems before. like it's run like a pro organization yeah it is like our um the facilities too like the our locker room which is like built like two or three years ago um so just all the staff there unbelievable so it's just uh it was a really hard decision for me to leave because of all that stuff but uh it was just an opportunity that i you know i couldn't turn down you know to be able to uh just my dream kind of just came true so but you know I'll, I'll miss bc and um you know i love all those guys so it was really hard oh yeah i mean i just, i watched all the signings after i mean yeah. i don't know for that yeah the, the rebuild it's, it's crazy how they just keep reloading and reload i mean you guys had like what six guys just t- like uh get signed yeah, or uh it was me uh alex newhook matt boldy and spencer knight and uh newhook and boldy were both my line mates and then uh Niter was our starting goalie and I mean, Niter is the best goalie I've oh. ever played with or against. So, I mean, he's going to have a hell of a career, but. Uh, yeah, he's going to, he's, ha- and he's in Florida. Sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really good spot. Yeah. Let alone his career, just living in like Miami area is going to be the greatest time oh, of his life. Yeah, I'm jealous. Uh, him and uh, actually, so Logan Hutzko, who was a senior this year, he uh, got injured halfway through the year. So he signed uh, midway through the year because he was, unable to play whatever so him and uh Niter are in florida right now and they're just, like sending me snapchats like you know like at the beach just like tanning and like, oh my god like to play hockey uh you know in the morning then just go back and tan like just that's just the, the long sickest thing. schedule ever like <laughs> yeah, yeah. i think thompson thompson kind of he didn't even play for the panthers but he was in the in the coast for the everglades which is like on the other side where miami yeah. is like naples area i um, mean that I mean, he probably spends more time at the golf course tanning bed after practice. Like, it's <laughs> yeah, the so greatest yeah. setup. Uh, but yeah, no, both those guys. Um, no, I think they're gonna really have they're gonna have really good careers. I know Niter is just. Uh, I never seen a guy like take care of his body. Like he, you see him, like he was one of my. I lived in a uh, six man at school at BC, and he was always stretching, uh, making his own meals, just like health freak. So uh, it was pretty crazy, but. But yeah, no, he, I mean, like both those guys, uh, hopefully, you know, they do really well in the Florida organization. Oh, absolutely. Now, what are some of the things that you've kind of noticed making the jump from college to pros? Like, what are some of the differences? Yeah, I mean, I haven't practiced yet. My first practice is uh, tomorrow, so uh, I'll probably have a lot more. But I think just, uh, no, I think it, everything's just like well organized. Like, you know, right when I got here, there was just, uh, you know, people call me from the organization, welcome me. And uh, I think yeah. just everything's just like pretty spread out. Like you had, um, you know, like a media guy call me, you had the team uh, organizer just like tell me like where I'm living, all that stuff. So it was just, uh, it was pretty cool. And I think just coming from college, like, you know, you're living in a dorm with all your buddies. And I think the biggest thing for me was just kind of realizing like there's guys in the team that have, that are married with kids where <laughs> in college you're living with, you know, you're, you're legit living with your best friends and you're yeah. on the schedule and it's like awesome. You get, you legit sleeping together. You're like sleeping in the same uh, dorm together. You're, you're in bunk beds. I mean, yeah. it's like yeah. being back at prep school. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. So like you're, you're doing everything together where like in, in, uh, in pro you're, you're literally just like, you're on a different schedule than like most of the guys, you know, all the single guys are probably hanging out, but there's guys that are probably what? married yeah. kids or just, you know, after practice, they're going right home. So I think that's the biggest thing that's going to be a little, little uh, different for me, but, um, but yeah, I'll see how it goes. I'm just really pumped to be able to practice and uh, meet all the guys. With the COVID, have you been able to skate at all or have you just been in isolation, just sitting in the hotel? Oh, there's, uh, I've been doing like body weight workouts um, in here, like some workouts they've been giving me, but uh, yeah. So like they're, they're saying like it's a set, NHL protocol, it's seven day, pro, um, seven day quarantine. So it's been pretty, uh, pretty, pretty tough, but just been, you know, talking to all my buddies and, um, you know, my past coaches and stuff like that. So, uh, it it's honestly kind of flew by. I actually got into watch entourage all over again. So, I mean, yeah. so yeah. you, uh, when you make that kind of transition, like you're obviously staying in the dorms, right? Like how does that process work? Do you just leave all your stuff at BC and just be like, I'll come back when the season's over and, and maybe don't touch my computer. Yeah, no, so, so this year it's, it's, uh, it's different because the season started in January for NHL teams. So 
The last regular season game is May 15th. So that's like after finals are done. So yeah. what happened was like after my, we lost at BC on a Sunday, drove back to BC that night. And then that whole Monday, um, I kind of sat with my parents and uh, my advisor and just kind of sat down and just was just like, uh, with like kind of just figure out what, what I was going to do. And um, once I figured out that I was in the South Chicago, I immediately called all my teammates and um, just talked to them about it. Obviously called my coaches before and let them know that I was uh, going to sign. Then I just packed up all my stuff and I live in Hanover, Mass. So it's uh, about a 30 minute drive from BC. So you lucked out. <laughs> yeah, packed, packed all my stuff up and just drove it back to my house. And, uh, but it was sad. I like, just leaving, you know, all my best buddies and uh, packing up the, it feels like yesterday I was like just moving all my stuff in. Like, it's just crazy. Oh. Like, the year just flies by. So it really it does. Was, it was emotional. Yeah. And I mean, your turn, it's been such a quick turn. I just feel like uh, everything's been flying by for you. It's just like, go, go, go. Especially with like COVID, how it's kind of like interrupted the season starting and, and uh, like all those rules with like uh, only Massachusetts can play, but Vermont can't have like UVM come down. And it's, it's uh, yeah, that was tough. I think like, like the biggest thing in college too is like we, we saw so at BC, like my first, uh, first year, we went on a road trip to Denver. And we, we left on like a Wednesday and like played on a, played on a Friday and Saturday. And like those trips are just like awesome because you're, you're just with the boys the whole time. And yeah. uh, you're going to these like awesome dinners and you're staying in all these nice hotels. And this year we couldn't do that because of COVID and stuff. So it was pretty, pretty brutal. But, um, but yeah, our season started in November and we only got to play like with playoffs and everything. We only got to play 24 games where like last year. We, 24 is like off. at November for you guys. Yeah, exactly. So like, um, again, my freshman year, we didn't play playoffs. We, we only played regular season games. We played 34. So with like playoffs, we probably would have played like over 40. Oh, so yeah. this year was like a shortened season. Um, but we are, we're, we were lucky. We got to play in all those other colleges, like the, I have a lot of friends on Harvard and like Dartmouth and stuff like that. And you no, know, they, they couldn't play at all. So yeah, that's thanks. I keep forgetting. I forgot the Ivy League. Uh, yeah. you, you we're, we're just about like the Ivy League. They didn't even have a season for any other winter sports. Yeah, exactly. So we were we were lucky to play, and um, we, we kind of just made the most of it. And uh, I mean, it was it was tough with all the COVID restrictions and stuff like that. But I mean, everything everyone had a had a deal with it, so it was just uh, something we had to do. Yeah. Now. Um, uh, I know you said you haven't uh, been able to kind of meet any of the guys in the locker room, but I'm curious to see kind of who's going to be the first one to start to take you under the wing, show you like <laughs> the ropes, like. Yeah, here, yeah here. it should be it should be pretty cool. I think it's uh, it's gonna be pretty crazy. I'm you know, meeting um, you no know, these like Hall of Fame legends like you know Patrick Kane and Duncan Keith and you know those guys. You know, I've, I mean, you've played with them in NHL like 2012 you know it's like it's gonna be like the coolest experience i would think yeah, you know you, you've watched you, you've watched these guys your whole life and you've seen these guys you know, raise raise stanley cops and um no it's just my my all my buddies uh back home have been asking me about that and it's just uh it's gonna be surreal but it's uh you're gonna be starstruck for i'm gonna be starstruck for for like the first first bit there but i think uh you know once you you start practicing and um you know, getting involved, start, like wiping cane skates. Yeah. Off. You forget <laughs> like you're on the team, like you're not a fan yeah. anymore. <laughs> the first couple of days. So it's, uh, no, I'm just really excited. And, um, no, I was talking to my parents about it. Just, uh, no, it's just, it's just, uh, it's gonna be something that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. So oh, I mean, do you ever kind of just like look back at how far you've come and just realize like it's, I think it's just so crazy that like you're yeah. in the NHL, do you know, like, under like a one percent of the kids get to play in that and just like the the so road tough. that you've had from where you've started to like you, it sounded like you were a work in progress and then as you started to grow and develop that's when you really started to blossom and now it's like you're peaking at all the right times throughout your kind of stages in your in your yeah. hockey career it's, I mean, it's like i took i think uh definitely I, I took a different like path like talking to you know being at bc and like being like with all these guys that played for NTDP and, you know, a lot of the guys were first round picks and they just have like, Oh yeah, I played um, for my school for two years. I went to the NTDP where I was like, I, I needed two years of juniors, you know, to be able to play college. And that's like pretty different 
than like guys that play for BC or BU, you know, usually guys are true freshmen. And I came in as a 20 year old freshman. And um, I think for me, I needed those two years to kind of develop uh, on and off the ice. I think just, um, you know, knowing, uh, you know, what kind of player I really was. And then going into BC, I think just knowing like, Hey, I need to play like this in order to play. And, um, I got an opportunity to play with with New Hook and Boldy um, in like this in like January of my freshman year, and our line just started to click. And you know, ever since then, um, I got to play with those guys, and um, you know, they're two of the best players I've ever played with. And just be able to play with those two guys, and um, you know, they they both obviously signed with the Colorado and Minnesota, and just seeing how they play and how they perform uh, on and off the ice was just pretty crazy. But yeah, I think it was just like talking to people. They're like, oh yeah, you want to went to Winston. I know you would played in the BCHL, be your 20 year old freshman. Just like, yeah, I mean, I think without those things, I'm not like where I am right now. So yeah, uh, it's just, I, I needed those two years of juniors and I needed a prep school where I was going to play, um, you know, a lot of minutes and um, it, so I ended up working out. Yeah. But it's, it's pretty crazy. If you told me. Um, At elite hockey. <laughs> if you told me elite hockey, like, Hey, like party, like you're, you're going to be, playing for the Blackhawks. Put that Dartmouth paddle down now and <laughs> go to my driveway and start ripping pucks. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to be, if you're going uh, to be in the NHL spring of 2021. This is like, this is like summer 2017. I'd be like, there's no way. Yeah. Go so fuck think, yourself. <laughs> yeah. There's no way. So I think just, um, you know, these past four years have been, have been crazy, but I think just, uh, you know, I'm trying to take the, take the opportunity here and, you know, try to run with it. When does, are you at that point yet where you like, uh, when does the transition happen where you kind of go from doubting yourself to like, start to like buy into your confidence, be like, okay, I, th- I think this can yeah. actually happen. Like that we can, this can actually become a thing. Or are you still in the shell shock stage? Like, Oh yeah. I think, um, I think my freshman year, I saw my, the summer going into my freshman year, I went to Bruins development camp. And even there, even then I was just like, Oh, like, like develop, like, Oh, this, this is all. Awesome awesome like I'm at the warrior rank like uh but like with like some of the Bruins prospects whatever this is sick but like your hometown team mind you yeah. like yeah I was, it was still it was unbelievable but I was just like ah uh, like I mean I don't know if this is ever going to happen like these guys are like unbelievable like I, I mean it was just like pretty crazy and then freshman year I uh, started off in the fourth line which was fine I was like oh I'm a freshman like I'm at BC this is so sick like I don't really care and then uh I remember like one of my, one of the guys on the third line got injured and they bumped me up to the third line. And then I was playing pretty well. And then uh, we went on like a, th- like two or three game losing streak. And I remember going into practice uh, after the bean pot and um, on the lineup chart, it was uh, 19, 18, 12. So I was playing with new hook and bowling. And I was just like, oh, How you turn? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Oh, this is, this is like, pretty pretty nuts and uh, i That's remember more like it more more pp one time <laughs> and, uh, then that, so like that that year uh ended up happening and we our line did really well and uh right after the season ended i remember just talking um to my advisor and i talked to a few few teams and i ended up choosing to go to florida's development camp and um i was kind of just like oh like this is this is pretty crazy like i i mean i don't know if i'm ever going to do this for a job but uh, and then this year, uh, during the season, during the season, um, I started getting calls from like, uh, you know, a lot of these NHL teams. And I was just, just like talking to my dad. I was like, dad, like, this is this happening. Is <laughs> He's like, this, this could like be a thing. And my dad was just like, yeah, like don't like, don't think about it. Just like keep playing at BC, like, uh, keep playing your game, whatever. And, um, I remember just kind of just signing the paper, signing the contract, uh, at my house house i grew up in and i was just like this is the same actually- house you probably played knee hockey in a million yeah. times yeah and i remember just up. like talk i remember just giving my mom and my dad like hugs and i was just like this is like dream kind of just like came true but like i never really never really knew like it was gonna be a thing until like that like when i signed the contract i was just like but like i had like confidence playing for bc like and all that stuff but i was just like it was just crazy like i can't even like put it into words it's just uh an I mean, feeling. Yeah. i just as a as a fan and and uh and just like looking at the sidelines i just think just like kind of just being able to, like i mean i was there at kind of ground level so i got to see like yeah. everything kind of happen overnight and it's it's uh i'm still like 
I'm, I mean, I, when you went to BC, I was like, oh, this is so sick. Cause like, I knew kind of like you, you're going to union and then obviously when you decommitted and then decided to go to BC, I'm like, oh yes. Like this is like kind of hat, like, and at every road and there's still, I mean, even sometimes at the camp, you had like some guys that would like hate on you. It's like, okay, what, like why? Right. Like, I, know, I, I mean, we used to like play, you were my Dartmouth partner. Like you and yeah. Riley were my, I, mean, my I, know, like, I know like you Boyster, like both, both voices and, um, you know, like Sol and a couple of those guys were like Dev Moore, Trevor Cosgrove. They're all awesome guys. But, you know, there's, there's, I know there were some people there that were chirping me. And, you know, there's people in college that were, you know, before going to BC, there's people saying like, oh, like he's not going to play at BC. He's going to be a fourth line guy all four years. And, uh, you know, there's, there's even guys right now that are saying that, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good enough to play in the NHL. And, you know, that's fine. Like I've proved people wrong, you know, most of my life. So, uh, you know, it's, it's fine, but You're yeah, I know. I know uh, yeah, no. So it's, I mean, like, that's just hockey for you. There's people that are going to bring you down when, when you're up and um, it's fine. You know, I'm going to prove those people wrong again, but I think that, uh, you know, there's definitely people, there's probably people at, at there at like they're at elite that were saying that all this stuff, but yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, I know I had you in my corner and I had, you know, a couple other guys were in my corner the whole time. So yeah, it was just, it was, it was good to, good to see that. Uh, I mean, Dartmouth partners for life you know you gotta gotta carry that no matter where you go <laughs> yeah exactly now this one's uh what was your biggest failure and how did it change you yeah um that's a great question because there was um a lot of growing up there was a lot of failures for me as a hockey player I think the biggest thing was um growing up I was friends with a lot of all my buddies growing up were like these you know, like when you're, when you're a kid growing up in mass, there's like these really good hockey players that everyone talks about. And I was friends with all those guys. Um, and I think the biggest thing for me was uh, there's festival camp. I'm sure you you're. Oh yeah. You know yeah. So mass festival camp, there's uh three years you're able to go and all three years uh, I got cut and just seeing all my buddies that were at camp in Buffalo, like, having a sick time. They're talking to all these college scouts and Get their Facebook profile pick with the U S yeah. development practice Jersey, yeah. putting up Instagrams, uh, send me Snapchats, like all like being nice guys about, but there's like, I wanted to be there so bad. I remember just like three years in a row, I got cut and didn't even, didn't even make the all-star game three years in a row. It's just like, I was honestly just like, I, I might, like I was, I, I played lacrosse growing up too. And, uh, I was thinking about just like picking up the cross and just trying to play in college. I was just so frustrated. I was just like, this is, I'm not good at hockey. Like I, I'm, I'm not making these, these teams, or whatever. And my parents were just like, you love hockey, like keep going, keep uh, like, just be patient whenever. And um, that was a year I went to Winch and uh, I am going to Winch and, you know, having a good year and kind of getting my confidence. But I think just um, that year, just like getting caught third, year in a row and I was just like am I really like should I even like pursue hockey anymore like should I just like play lacrosse and I mean the the, the best decision I ever made was sticking with hockey but uh it was tough like just getting cut from these teams over and over again and I mean at that time you're just like ah like I'm, I'm just gonna I'm done like it's it's crazy but um no I, I had people in my corner uh you know previous coaches and um you know my my family just kind of told me to, to stick with it and I ended up doing it and definitely um, like a, an amazing support group yeah so yeah my parents were, were there every step of the way and um you know to be cut from that festival three years in a row it's it's really hard and um you know i actually i know a kid that uh at northeastern Amy mcdonough who's having a really good uh career at northeastern he was kind of kind of the same thing as me like he was cut and um he's having a really good career at northeastern he's drafted by vancouver so uh, i was kind of, just, kind of just me and him just uh, in the background and, and just watching all of our buddies like do really well at Natty camp. So it was, it was tough, but yeah, that was probably the, the toughest thing I've, I've had to go through. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, that, I mean, your story is just one of the greatest and uh, it, it only just keeps getting better as the, the chapters <laughs> keep going. But um, now uh, have you, I know it's pretty new, but have you started to set any goals for yourself for, for your new, uh, for your new team or? Do you have yeah. any like personal goals that you have kind of when um, you know, that you're making this jump? I mean, yeah, it's only, it's only been a week here, but I think the the biggest goal, I think everyone's goal, like it's just to stay up with the team as long as you can. 
Yeah. That's the biggest thing. I mean, like, I think just talking to guys that play in the NHL now and guys that played in the NHL, they're saying, like, one, it's so hard to make it to the NHL, and two, it, it's even harder staying there. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing is just, um, you know, just trying to trying to stay here as long as I can and um, and try to, you know, help the team win. But, uh, yeah, just talking to, to people, they're saying, like, like you're playing in the best league in the world and there's guys coming in every day trying to, you know, trying to be in the lineup. So it's just, um, you know, it's, it's really hard. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it's also exciting. You get to play hockey every day and you get paid to do it. Best so, job I mean, in the world. Just, yeah. So it's, uh, no, I'm just, I'm just really humbled to, you know, be able to be in this organization and, um, you know, to be able to play, play my dream job. So yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty amazing. That's awesome. Now, what you think your parents will be able to come out and see you at all, or how, how's it kind of yeah, work? Yeah, for sure. I think that. Um, so my dad came out here with me, and then he flew back to Boston. But um, yeah, my my parents definitely want to come out um, this spring and kind of check out Chicago and uh, be able to you know see a game um, at the United Center. And but yeah, I'm, like honestly, like my my parents um, have never been to Chicago. So so and I haven't been I before this I've never been here before either. So yeah, just to be able to see the city and um, you know, get that I'm, deep dish pizza. I guess that's like a no. I, I, I haven't got it yet, but I had a few uh, few friends um, at BC that are from Chicago. And when I signed, they're like, dude, yeah, you got to go to Giordani's. You got to go. Yeah. To, uh, yeah. So it's like, like an I, art, I guess, so like how they make yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So like I think the, just to have my my parents that have been with me every step of the way, just to come out here and just kind of see the whole city and uh, be able to experience like the, you know, the, the important parts of Chicago will be pretty cool. But with all the COVID restrictions, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but uh, you know, hopefully next year, uh, if I'm up with the team, it's, uh, you know, for them to come out here, would be pretty cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time out of your busy day. I know, don't you, I think you have practice after this, right? Or you have something after this? Yeah, no, I've, uh, so I actually just got tested this morning at the rink, but, uh, I have practice tomorrow, tomorrow morning. So today's like my last day of quarantine, but, um, but yeah, no, I'm so I'm just obviously trying to get, uh, get ready for tomorrow. First, first NHL practice. So it's, it's, it's exciting. And, uh, but yeah, no, thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's, um, I've, I've been following the podcast for a little bit here and uh it looks looks uh really really funny and uh really cool so i'm sure uh hopefully i get, I get another uh hopefully i get another uh another shout out here that'd be that'd be pretty cool 100 uh, percent. you can come on anytime i'm already ordering my number 86 jersey to see if that's available yeah. so you're gonna be getting yeah. a package from me to have you sign it so i can get you up here in the yeah. man cave absolutely i want to i want to be in the on the uh, back wall there that'd be pretty cool oh Interred eternity, <laughs> eternity. But thank you so much. I this has been an amazing. I just love sharing these stories, and and uh, hopefully it inspires other people, and and uh, to kind of pave the way for the next next yeah, crop of kids so that they uh, start to pursue I'm their excited. dream. Yeah, I'm excited for it, and uh, no, I'm just I'm really um, really happy that I get to be in this organization, and uh, yeah, I'm just really really uh, happy that I get to be on the podcast here. It's uh, I know it's hilarious, so yeah, looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. You can follow him, Mike Hardman7 on Instagram. Be sure to hit that follow button. Let's blow his numbers up real quick. But uh, thank you so much. This has been amazing. And uh, I'll be, uh, you know, where I'll be, Man Cave watching the first game. Bro. So I'll be pulling for it. That was an awesome story. Uh, big thanks to, to Mike for coming on, uh, taking, a, taking the day out, the time out of his busy day to uh to speak with us i mean as you can see he's kind of cooped up in the uh the hotel room just kind of waiting out quarantine and, and then he's got a big practice today so good luck uh thank you so much for stopping by and uh nick any last thoughts no i think you uh i think you covered everything you know just make sure if you haven't yet go over to localbigtime.com shop uh, check out some of the gear we've got on there we've got t-shirts like this one uh we've got a couple of hoodies uh, also, keep in mind, we're working on the spring slash summer line. Um, I know I said that last time. I'm going to continue to say it every time until the merch actually comes out. But uh, just know we're working on that, and we're super excited to see what you guys think. So.